this week on Socratic Cinema. Wait, what was that, Casey? Repeat your plot for the audience. No, I was going to say, if only he could die hard. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, it's fine. I, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, hey, Powell, why are you just an office cop? Oh, it's because I shot a kid. And I would feel very, very comfortable giving this a slick 10 out of 10. Welcome back to another episode of Socratic Cinema, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Charlie Heatherly. My name is James Delisio. And I'm Casey Clark. And this week... In honor of Christmas time, we are talking about one of my favorite action movies, one of my favorite Christmas movies, Die Hard. Woo! Yay. Wow, yeah. the hype was really not. You guys are. Yeah. Come on, uh, don't be my hype people. Yeesh. We'll talk I'm about with it. you, Charlie. Woo! Thank you, Casey. <laughs> James is just the Grinch. <laughs> I'm not the Grinch. I have, don't worry. I have, a nuance, I have a nuanced take. Oh, do you really? Do you really? We are. Okay. It's no longer no nuance November. This is full nuance December. <laughs> <laughs> Full nuance December. Well, personally, uh, I think it's hard to argue that Die Hard uh, is not a absolutely fantastic movie. I think that it, it stands up there in the Action Hall Movie Hall of Fame with all the other greats like Terminator and others that I will not name, etc. I'm going to do that little trick. Uh, <laughs> and I think that we have a lot to to dive into. But James, I know that you wanted to say something about one of your recent video essays first. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Die Hard is cool and all, and Christmas is neat, and we're trying to get in the Christmas spirit here. Oh, you'll notice our new Christmas logo, uh, but you may have noticed our new Christmas logo on our first video of the month, which was our new Attack on Titan video essay in celebration of the fourth season coming out. As we're recording this, we're just waiting for those subtitles to drop on the uh, season premiere of the final season. So if you're as excited as we are, just be sure to go check out that new video essay. I, uh, I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you guys enjoy it. That's all I wanted to say, just a little plugging. Uh, also, YouTube copyright claims are ridiculous, and we had to fight a multi-week war with YouTube to get that video out. So uh, if you enjoy it, please just just sympathize with, the, with what we've been through, man. It's been a long couple of weeks fighting against the corporations. But yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, in the Christmas spirit, we will be acting as beggars on the street. So feel free to give us money <laughs> at any point. Uh, we're panhandling this entire month. Yeah, so, yeah. Check out our Patreon at, at uh, patreon.com slash Socratic Cinema. If you're a fan of the show and you want to give back and help us make the show even better and even more high quality, we can get like mic arms or something crazy like that, you know. <laughs> if you care about us. If you care about us at all, you would go be a, a $1 a month patron. So if you're heartless, then you can just not, but you know, it's just, whatever. Yeah. Like go through some contemplation about it. And if you feel, no, if you, it's seriously though, if you, if you, no pressure, obviously nothing's going to change. If you don't, we're always going to keep doing this. But uh, if you feel it in your heart that you want to give back to your favorite content creators, uh, consider checking out our Patreon page. Yeah, that's all. You know, I think I've decided that we're much better at shilling. So let's just make the entire episode that instead of Die Hard. <laughs> executive decision right now, but there is, so much to dive into uh, with Die Hard, but I think first, traditionally, let's go over our general thoughts and feelings about the movie, what we would rate it out of, you know, 10 or 5 or whatever rating scheme you want to do. And I think uh, it's only fair to go ladies first, so go ahead, Casey. All right. So, this is my first time seeing Die Hard in its entirety, um, but... I loved it. This is, as Charlie was saying, a classic need-to-watch action movie. It deserves all the hype it gets. Hans Gruber is probably one of the best action villains ever. Can I say that? Is that a hard yep. is that a oh, take? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. R rest in peace, Alan Rickman. You really, you went off on that one. <laughs> but I really liked the movie like it was the perfect kind of mixture of like humor and action and like a little bit of gore and then you just have all these like complex um like a complex story but it doesn't come off as like confusing you know like you have all these different parts that you're just waiting for them to come back to like Argyle in the um in the parking garage and Powell and his backstory and it just it all uh, it brought everything together really really nicely and I really really enjoyed it. I would say out of 10, I'd give it like a 9.5. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Jeez. fair. Wow. Fair. I wasn't expecting that. Whew. 
Uh, <laughs> Coke drinking, James. What would you rate it out of three? Well, I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, James is I, like three. <laughs> no, 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 no. God. But 9.5. Damn, that's like Jojo Rabbit tier. In my, like a 9.5 to me is like Jojo Rabbit or something. Um, but I also had never seen Die Hard before. All I knew about Die Hard going in was that it was an action movie and there's a big debate on whether or not it's a Christmas movie. And before watching it, I had a very like strong opinion that it wasn't a Christmas movie and I'd never seen the movie. Um, so I watched the movie and honestly, I was not looking forward to watching it. I don't know why. I just was like not in the mood. I was feeling very grinchy. I was like, uh, you know, I don't want to watch this. I'm just going to watch like a comfort movie instead and, and have a funny bit on the podcast where I didn't actually watch the movie. And then, but I realized that would probably be a really jerk thing to do. So I watched the movie and then I, 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 I really enjoyed it. It was a very fun action movie. I was a big fan of a lot of the characters, Powell, uh, Gruber. I loved Alan Rickman's performance as, as Hans Gruber. He was probably my favorite part. I loved Argyle. Argyle was, was great. He was also one of my favorite characters. Uh, and I just really enjoyed the movie. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, and it was just a, a very satisfying watch. I don't, I mean, I don't know that I'd put it in my personal favorites or anything. And as far as whether or not I think it's a Christmas movie, in my heart, I still don't know. But I know this much. Uh, there's no better time to watch it than December. Like, if you're going to watch Die Hard, it makes most sense to watch it around Christmas. But I still, uh, I, like, I feel like I'm closer to picking a stance, but I still don't know. But I, I know, like... I, it would feel weird to watch Die Hard in the summer, you know? Like, it just makes sense to watch it in December, I, if that now, makes sense. Now, one Hold might on. call me crazy. That might be the sign it's a Christmas movie. I don't it, know. It could I don't be. Know. You know, it really could be. I, I don't know either. Uh, and I think, you know, as Socrates said, you know, all I know is that I know nothing. So I'm trying to be nuanced about this. Uh, but I'm going to rate it out of 12 because that's the 12 days of Christmas. Oh, um, wonderful. And I would give it, like a what maybe a uh, i am i i i don't here's i struggle with ratings because i don't know if i'm rating this on as an action movie or is just like of all possible movies but i'm probably going to give it like a nine or a 10 out of 12 which if we reduce our fractions is like a seven or an eight so that's pretty much how i feel about die hard a seven that's satisfied crazy. with that yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I it, more towards an it's eight. the best we were going to get out of them, right? Yeah. But that's really funny, James, because I've considered doing that for about 10 different podcasts, like the whole I didn't watch the movie bit. So it's good <laughs> I, to see that we've swapped places. I was <laughs> no joke. I was this close to watching Pacific Rim instead. Like, I was literally <laughs> just going to watch Pacific Rim. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. But you're glad you watched Die Hard because it's such a I'm, wonderful movie. I'm glad I watched Die Hard. Yeah, it's very fun. It's a, the kind of movie that I... I watched it with like my dad and my brother, and I mm -hmm. don't. I think I would have enjoyed it less if I watched it on my own. This is a movie I think to watch with friends and like have a laugh about it. Um, not yeah, because it's to bad, watch with like, family around a Christmas tree in a roaring fireplace. Yeah, with but watch there. out for the gratuitous boobs. Oh my just, gosh! Just yeah, saying. whoa! I was watching this. With, <laughs> just I was saying. Not, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was watching it and I was just like, whoa. Jeez. It's a rated R movie. They have to like get all of their things in there. If it's already going to be rated R for gore, they might as well just have a little bit of boob. You I, know? I guess so. But a yeah, checklist. just tack it on. Took me by surprise. Well, I've seen this movie like 10 different times. So all of those scenes uh, I have memorized. Uh, and every uh... other scene. I've memorized every scene in this movie. And in fact, many of the memorable lines, it's very fun to go back uh, if you know all the lines and and say them with the characters but yeah not to be uh, a repetitive so I, I won't say much here but yeah you guys are entirely right it's a wonderful movie i think it's, it's definitely uh one of the best action movies of all time and i would feel very very comfortable giving this a slick 10 out of 10 Whoa. Whoa. this is this is a, about as good as an action movie is gonna get i don't okay. know Hold on. 10 there's out of nothing 10. bad about it that i 10 can out say of 10 on an action movie scale or on an all movies of all time scale uh, well, it is an action movie, so it accomplished everything it was trying to do. So, sure, all movies of all time. Yeah, 10 out of 10. Very good movie. Interesting. Charlie, this I, is... Uh, this is a first. Immaculate. This is a I first. I know. Do you know what else is the first? I took notes. I took notes this time. I w I'm prepared to, like, counteract any anti-Christmas arguments because I am the spirit of Santa Claus and I want everything to be jolly. So if anyone comes at me with anything saying this isn't a Christmas movie, I have, I have oodles of notes in my notes app. 
Yeah, so you better be this is going to turn yeah. into a Socratic Smackdown part two. I hope not. I can guys. feel I'm it. I'm here to keep the peace. I'm here to keep the peace. Uh, but that's your wow. I think that's your first ten out of ten on the on the show. I think uh, probably. So. Yeah, and I'm no, just, I'm, it deserves I, it. I have like the only there's like one scene in the movie that I really really didn't like, and like you were saying, for what it set out to accomplish, I think Die Hard did an incredible job. I mean the. I, I'd knock some points off because I like in the beginning, some of the performances I feel like weren't like crazy good. I don't know. It took me a while to warm up to Bruce Willis as a character, but like there's one specific scene I want to talk about later that just completely, I was like, why, why is this in the movie? But we'll, we'll get there. Uh, but what should we talk see, about first guys? I don't know. Joy, go ahead, Charlie. Well, that's crazy. Cause I, I mean, I think Bruce Willis is a, is, is a great topic to talk about for this because he has famously stated, uh, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. It is a Bruce Willis movie. Uh, and I did the research. There is oh no God. such thing as a Bruce Willis movie. Bruce movie. So, <laughs> it's that like took a long time. Kojima yeah. tried to see. You're no Death Stranding, the game. Yeah. That quote reminds me of <laughs> Kojima in an interview was like, Death Stranding is a new kind of game. It's 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 a new genre. It's a strand type game. And everyone in the inter in the panel was like, what the hell does this guy say? What is a strand game? <laughs> Well, it's Death Stranding, obviously. This is a Bruce Willis type movie. It's a new genre. This is one of the only movies that Bruce or, or Bruce Willis has ever had a good performance in, and I think that's a great thing to start talking about: is how well did Bruce Willis play John McClane? I think he is all the cheese that you want from an '80s action movie. I think that's integral to the film, by the way, that this movie is cheesy. Uh, and I think that yeah. he's a very compelling character. I love his enthusiasm in the scenes. I think he's a great action hero. He's very active, energetic. He has all the physicality that you would want. There's nothing really that I look at and I'm like, oh, he did a bad job doing that. I think he honestly nailed it as John McClane. Yeah, I, I agree. I think once we get into like, once the ball starts rolling in the movie, I totally love John McClane. Like, I love his performance and I love his character and his like one-liners and everything. It's very quintessential action hero. I, I agree. I think it's just like in the 20 minutes or so of movie before the action starts, I was just kind of like, I'm not really, uh, I don't know. I just wasn't really compelled by him for like that first little bit. But once we got going, I was totally into it. That's, that's, yeah, that's my only like nitpick. And I can't really give any specific examples, which maybe goes to show that like it wasn't really that bad, but it just took me a little bit to warm up to him. But I totally am a big fan of Bruce Willis's work here. I can give examples. You can give examples. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> okay. So at the beginning of the movie, like obviously, it's an 80s movie. We're setting up the, you know, the manly man, macho, watch, whatever. The fact that the first 20 minutes is just like, oh, I'm going to get my wife, in quotes, back because I was intimidated that she got a job and left me. Oh, no. <laughs> and took the kids. And I was like, are we? <laughs> and I was honestly nervous because I was like, are we going to spend this whole movie like, not addressing misogyny <laughs> like are we just no, not that's his whole arc is he yes yeah, he learns yeah. to be supportive of his wife yeah <laughs> yeah and i was like that. yes all it took was several near-death experiences i mean that's something that all of the characters are doing in this movie by the way there's not like a scene really where it's just like expedition exposition dump you know the entire way through a lot of the exposition is sort of thrown into little character moments and you get a lot of those with hans when he's like yelling at his subordinates like, oh, you can't kill him yet because stage five of our plan is, is or, or isn't ready. The cops were always supposed to come here. Like, I think there's a, a lot of very fun and, and intricately woven in moments that convey exposition in a way that isn't boring and doesn't feel like somebody's just explaining their plan to you. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and, and if we wanted to talk about Hans for a little bit, I love him. I love him as a villain. I think Alan Rickman's performance is so slick and intimidating, and Hans is such, like, a a high-class, like, fancy-schmancy, smoozy villain. I love Hans Gruber in this film. He is so much fun, and he's so intimidating. Like, he's a good villain. Well, and so that's why Alan Rickman's great, is because he is a scrawny little string bean of a man. But yet he's the most terrifying person <laughs> on set at any given moment. Oh, like, I don't know how he does it. It's just his intelligence is a weapon in every film he's in. 
I and couldn't not I hear know. Snape though. Is the only thing I couldn't. That's I couldn't, very it makes true. It hurt if you can only hear Snape, Are I couldn't me? not hear. For, I hate Snape. As a, listen, I there's a big Potter debate about whether Snape is justified or not. He's not. He's not. I hate Snape so much. <laughs> you guys are He's crazy. Not. No, I hate Snape. No, so no, 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 no. I don't care. There's We're no excuse for that. seven years of child abuse. There's no excuse for seven <laughs> years of child. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> He's literally an incel. Snape is just an incel. Snape. He's Isn't trying his hardest so. in this hard, hard world, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough world out here for a guy who, yeah. who gets rejected. If I, only I mean, you have you seen his haircut? How much could the man do? Uh, Wait, oh, well, in that case, mind. you repeat your plot for the audience. No, I was going to say, if only he could die hard. Ha ha. Uh, it's fine. You made me repeat that. <laughs> I'm blaming you. Can I get that one more time? No. Moving on to the next point. Uh, I don't have another point to move on to. Where were we? I think we were, we're talking, talking about, about how awesome, Gruber. yeah, how, how awesome Alan Rickman is as as Hans Gruber. Is there another reason for that besides the fact that his intelligence is just massively intimidating? Uh, I think it's just Alan Rickman doing his Alan Rickman thing, man. Like he he's very good. Just like, Alan. I mean, Hans Gruber I, I, is a lot like Snape in that same kind of like intimidation factor. Like they're 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 a very similar personality. It's it's. It's like that's that's just what Alan Rickman plays best is that kind of like cold, calculating villain, uh, and it's fun to see Hans Gruber kind of like unravel over, as he gets like more desperate throughout the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. I especially like the the little almost role reversal when he stumbles upon John McClane, and yes, there's this role reversal where the whole time. Hans has been sort of in the position of power. He's has all these people kidnapped. And then you get this weird reversal where it's almost like now he's John McClane's prisoner. I mean, not really, but like John McClane is the guy with the power in that dynamic in that scene. And I just, I was a big fan. I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. Uh, I really liked the part where, where he sort of is stuck with McClane and kind of has to keep this cover up, even though it doesn't last very long. I, was a big fan of that. I thought that was a very clever kind of role reversal. Oh, totally. Like, there's so many of those little tiny moments as well where it's... I don't even know what to call them. They're not, like, action set pieces, but they're they're little changes in the story that, that break the pacing up enough to where it's just incredibly interesting all the way throughout, and that's definitely one of them, and it just shows how great Alan Rickman is as a performer. Like, when right. you hear the desperation in Hans Gruber's voice when he's like, Oh, please, I'm an American... <laughs> like it, it feels real like the accent's a little screwy but like that's exactly how hans gruber would be right yeah i want to or go, go ahead, ahead. No, i i forgot what i was okay. gonna say if i'm gonna be honest one of my favorite things in that scene is that the, the movie actually shows that it, it knows how to use uh cinematography it uses dutch angles that entire conversation uh when they're talking with each other and i think that that's just so wonderful as a subtle little hint to the audience that something's up i mean they obviously know that something's up but it just adds an extra layer, and it shows that the filmmakers have, you know, pretty great technical ability in what Wait, they're ready, doing. Ready? Vocabulary word for the day. We have I have two vocabulary words. Dutch angles are the when the camera go tilty, and 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 it and it makes you think that something's weird. But but what I was thinking of is our, my vocab term for the day is dramatic irony. The, this this scene is a perfect example of dramatic irony, where the audience knows something that the characters don't, and it creates this wonderful little tension. Uh, I know everyone who's taken high school English class hears all about dramatic irony with like Shakespeare or whatever, but uh, the audience in this case knows that Hans Gruber is the bad guy and he's not this, you know, American schlub, but John McClane doesn't know that. So you get this really interesting situation where it's like, oh, the audience is like yelling at the screen, like, dude, put the pieces together, shoot him. He's the bad guy. But the characters don't know. And it's it's uh, very nice. So good on good on Die Hard for that. I This scene was one of my favorites in the movie and I was a big fan. Or does John McClane know? That oh yeah, wait. He kind of he. I wasn't sure because okay, he, like I'm not an idiot, and he like pulls out the gun anyways, or he didn't like load the gun, you know. I think there's tons of. <clears throat> pardon me. I think there's tons of reasons for him to know that it's Hans Gruber. Think about it. He has the comms of the terrorists this entire time. He would know if somebody's running around, right? And it's very strange to me that some random guy would also be able to survive in the same way that John McClane did. Like, both of them were, were being, or presumably, right, if we're supposed to believe Hans's story, both of them were being hunted, and then Hans was just sort of like, 
hiding in a box somewhere and like that's how he he survived like john mcclain's had to do a lot of work to stay alive right so i think he knows that he's probably the only one out there and then giving him an unloaded gun is also a safe bet because if they do get into a firefight he knows the other guy probably doesn't know how to shoot the thing right so give yeah. him a, an unloaded gun if he turns on you then he's not going to kill you and in a gunfight you're the one with like the mp3 or whatever the heck he was carrying you're going to be the one, one with the audio people. file <laughs> the right audio? exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a huge brain from John McClane, though. I didn't even think about that. The whole give him that unloaded gun thing. That's such a great, like, fail safe. I, wow. Charlie out here making me, like, think John McClane is 500 IQ. He is really, really smart. Well, one of the other things that people think is a little bit dumb is that he tells the terrorists he's there by sending the ho, ho, ho message uh, with the first guy that he's killed. Like, a lot of How people think, dumb? well, some people think it's dumb because it's like, oh, wait, but you were hidden. Like, oh, true. Like, oh. You, you, you could have just hid there, right? Well, the problem with that is these guys are going to know if one of their men goes down and isn't answering the phone, right? Like, number one, that's sure. just how it's going to work. Uh, number two, the point of John McClane's entire plan is to throw a wrench into the works of these guys, right? And to make them pay attention and stop focusing on the hostages so much. Yeah, he's a distraction, yeah. So it makes sense that he would say, I have a machine gun now, ho, 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 because number one, well, if the body he didn't send down has the machine gun, then he probably has the machine gun. That's safe to assume, right? And then number two, like, it seems that Hans's plan is very, very intricate. And the second something goes wrong, then it's just death by a thousand cuts at, after each piece starts falling and falling and falling after that. It's like taking a card out of a giant card tower. It will all slowly crumble. Yeah, I, uh, I, I really, I, I think something I really liked about the movie that that was very interesting was the fact that like everybody can hear each other at all times with the comm system. Uh, like when uh, McLean is talking to Powell, the terrorists can hear that, and Powell or McLean can also hear what the terrorists are saying, and they can hear what McLean's saying. I just thought it was very interesting that it's like everyone's on open mic the whole time. I, I thought that was a very mm -hmm. good way to add tension, and it's something that made it a little more unique and made our characters be a little bit more careful about what they're saying and what they're revealing. I want to know why McLean picked his moniker to be Roy, though. I, I don't know. I, I, I have I no clue. Throwback to um, the action movie person that he was taunting Hans with. It's Roy something. I don't, rem I don't remember the guy's last name. But when Hans was having the conversation with John, like, oh, you've watched too many movies. You think you're, like, all these action people. And he's like, well, I think I'm more of the Roy guy. And then that's why he goes by Roy. He calls him... Uh, Roy Rogers. Roy, Ro yeah, Roy, Roy Rogers. Rogers. Yeah, Roy Rogers. Yeah, it's Roy Rogers. And that's also why he, like, calls him... Like, they call him Cowboy, too. is because, I guess, Roy yeah. Rogers was, like, a cowboy guy. I'm just... I did a quick Google... I, I, I search why does John McClane call himself Roy? And the first autofill for why does John McClane is why does John McClane's shirt change color? It's because it gets dirty. <laughs> it's because <laughs> he's bleeding all over. Yeah, it gets sweaty and grimy. That's why it, that's why John McClane's shirt changed color. Um but wow, he he no, he really went through a lot of things that would change his, his shirt color. Think about it. There's dust all over the place. He's bleeding on it. He's sweating on it. Explosives go off. So probably something with you know either smoke or shrapnel or you know soot. some sort of thing there. Soot. Like this he man went through is a whole vent damn. system. Like he did go through a whole vent system. He got lint Not going on to him. be clean. <laughs> he got lint on him. What I want to oh, know no. is. How loud was Argyle's music? I mean, the entire floor above him got blasted by C4, and Argyle was still just vibing. Like, how did he not... If I would have really hoped Argyle would have heard that. I aspire to be Argyle. Yeah. Head He's empty. Just like, unbothered, head like, empty, how does drinking the, how, in bear. How does the entire floor above you get detonated and you don't realize? Christmas tree probably just fell. I don't know. Yeah, you guys, really loud Christmas tree, you know? I'm chilling in my car with Run DMC. <laughs> yeah, but oh, Argyle, I love oh, that. that was so great. That I was amazing. That yeah, but Argyle, beautiful. Oh, chef's kiss. I love Argyle. And his little hero yes. moment where he punches the hacker man trying to get away. Oh, Theo. Theo was good, too. I thoroughly enjoyed Theo. Okay, I was, yeah, so Theo was great. that I forgot his name. It's Theo. Okay, I because like, mm -hmm. I only said it like once or twice, and I just did not catch it. Uh yeah he was great too i i he was very yeah. funny and, and charismatic and i feel like he was a good like 
kind of foil to the rest of the bad guys. Kind of this, oh yeah, you, you know, upbeat, haha, joking around bad guy when the rest of them are these stoic, blonde flowing Fabio German men, you know. <laughs> Fabio uh, German men. Question. Hey, don't yeah. forget the one Asian guy and then the one, the one Hispanic Italian guy dude. or South American dude. Was he Italian? Well, the subtitles are like speaking in Italian. <laughs> okay, oh. I don't watch the subtitles on this. <laughs> and then uh, also. Okay, question because I'm kind of slow. So John McClane, there was like the the big bad guy, right, with the long blonde hair, and he was super buff, and there was that big fight. And then John McClane hangs him with the chain, right, mm -hmm. which yeah. was super metal. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, Ooh. and shot him. No, and shot just him. slammed. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, was and slammed that... his face into a wall. Yeah, he was through a lot. Anyways, <laughs> was that guy who got hung? The same guy who came back on the rooftop at the last minute? Because there's no uh, way that yes. man should be alive. Well, How? I thought it was a thing about really blonde man. I mean, the thing about hanging is that most people die from hanging by the snap of the neck rather than like the actual asphyxiation. Yeah. So, I mean, he probably didn't get his neck snapped by, you know, getting rammed against a wall. So there's a chance he did, but yeah, you're right. I mean, that guy is worse for wear at that point, and he's running off of pure fumes. Oh, I just, I had no idea if that was supposed to be the same guy or not, because I was like, there's running no way this pure revenge. If it was the same guy, then I was like, ah, <laughs> uh, geez, that guy's, uh, either that guy's superhuman or this is a little unbelievable. Um, but I want to talk about the one scene that just really I did not vibe with and I thought was super unnecessary. Let's talk about Powell's backstory. Oh, yes, James. What? Like, what? Let's talk about it. I, I was watching the movie, yeah. and I was like, dude, Powell's great. I love Powell. This is a great little, mm -hmm. like, team-up where Powell's on the outside, like, giving intel. And, and, and yeah. I loved Powell and McLean's dynamic, and I still do. But then I, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, John McLean was sitting in the bathroom tending to his foot, and then he was like, hey, Powell, why aren't you, uh, why are you just an office cop? And then he was like, oh, it's because I shot a kid. He had a toy gun. He literally said he had a toy gun. Looked real enough. And I was like, "What? Why, why? Why is this in the movie? Why this? This did this did nothing for the plot. We never come back to it. It it literally is just there to be like. Oh, no, we do come back to it. It's at the very end when he shoots the the terrorist that is Jesus that, is himself. That didn't. I don't know. I. Uh, I didn't ch change anything for me. Like, oh, he shot a kid, but it's okay because he also shot a terrorist. It's like. I I don't know, and especially now, like in light of everything that's been going on, and like you know, a lot of injustices and corruption revealed in the policing system, whatever. That was just weird. I was like, yikes! Yes, that that backstory did not age well at all, and it, it to me it didn't add anything at all. It, they could have just been like, oh, Powell is an office cop for whatever reason like he's just not you know he's never seen any action whatever he's stuck in the office maybe he's cowardly or whatever and then he has this hero moment at the end where he like overcomes his fear and like he he's, shows that he's more than just an office cop and he shoots the guy but nope instead let's have him murder an innocent child well there's what? a reason yeah. why nobody believes him when he's talking like oh if, because Powell's a pretty intelligent cop. Like, it's pretty obvious to see that he knows what's going on. And that does not excuse at all the fact that he murdered a child, right? Like, that's just horrible. But right. that's the reason why nobody is is considering anything he's saying. But it's they because... could have written that off as just like, oh, he's just the office jockey. Wait, like, what does he know? Like, they could have written that off in so many better ways. But how would Powell be so smart then and, and so experienced? To know Maybe all that he's the he's the bottom guy on the ladder, and he's got to prove himself, and he's smart. But no one, you know, I, there are so many better ways they could have done that. Is my is all is all my point? Yeah. Like, well, eh. in my opinion, like watching it, like in my notes, I was like, why they got to do the black cop like that? But <laughs> <laughs> it's True. even worse that but he's like, black. <laughs> literally because what it really comes down to for me like this is like super predator timeline right so this is where we're oh, like true where yeah. we're like all right children especially black children dangerous so i feel like by flipping it on its head and having it be like a black cop shot a kid when obviously at the time that wasn't necessarily 
Um, not saying that it wasn't happening, but black cops doing that compared to white cops shooting. No, yeah. It's definitely came off as like, okay, you're trying to be like more self aware than you need to and you're not doing it necessarily well. Yeah. It's just it's like I mean, you could always make the argument that it's like, oh, of course the cop who shot a kid was black. Like, great. That's really the look Wait, we're going what? for here. You know, like, no, I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Oh, I see. I had to go yeah, through no, layers no, no. of sarcasm for that Sorry, one. sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> like, Whoa, dang. No, no. Oh, my gosh. No, sarcasm. Yeah, sarcasm. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but, yeah, it was, that was just a really, really, I was not a big fan of that. And it was a really, really bad look. And it didn't age well. And it, I didn't even notice that at all about the super predator thing. That was a really good point that adds a lot of historical context kind of because this came out in what 88 Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. yeah but i love powell i just don't get why that scene had to be the way that it was like well one of the the really interesting things about this movie is that although that bit didn't really age that well it, this movie's very anti-cop in a lot of it, and anti, True, uh, anti-organized forces. Yeah, Ooh, oh, the FBI were so scary. It was like just like back in Nam as they're gunning down. Like, it was like, what is happening? Yeah, they're yeah. they're also, horrible. All, the guy all of them from are bad. Goonies. That was the the guy Who? from Goonies. One of what? the cops. <laughs> yeah, it was oh one of God. the yeah the villains from Goonies, and I was like, yes, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, that's hype. <laughs> Goonies never say die. But, like, yeah, I mean, I think that in in today's age when we're really debating the role of the police force, this movie, like, takes a pretty harsh stance towards them. Like, Yeah, it's like... And, 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 and this is a time when L.A. is, like, really not that great, like, pretty unsafe and thing, bad things are happening in it. So to see that, like, this movie has the balls to say, yeah, the police force isn't really helping the situation at all and is, in fact, exacerbating the violence there and not doing a great job at solving anything, it's like, damn. Yeah, we okay, need, I see you. We need a police officer gone rogue armed with, uh, you know, fully automatic rifles as yes. our protector. We need a yeah, vigilante over feds any right. day. <laughs> any day. Jeez, John McClane's like the Punisher straight up, man. Honestly. He's the Punisher with with more happiness. The Punisher, to be the Punisher, you have to have, like, a black soul. Like, you have to have nothing left. But John McClane, at least he likes movies. You know, at least he's a cowboy, dude. Yeah, he... Uh... And he didn't lose his wife and children. Okay, hold on. But I'm very it afraid happens. of John McClane as an officer. Like, he has always been unhinged. I mean, in his first encounter <laughs> with the terrorist, he was the guy was like, police have rules they're supposed to follow. You can't kill me. And he was like, that's what my officer keeps trying to tell me. And it was like, yo, pause. Oh, God. Like, bro, like, bro <laughs> did I excuse you want to repeat yeah. yourself? Huh? This man should not have a badge. <laughs> that was John McClane is uh, a better vigilante than he is a police officer. Yes. Oh, certainly. Well, well, he's also contributing to that bad system of of cops. He right? is no like, better than Powell. <laughs> he's no better than than any of them. But as he's, soon as he's taken in the context of a vigilante who has to like work his way through this building or like a hostage, essentially, like his entire motto changes. But if he's put on the force again, like he is just as bad as all the cops that we're trying yeah. to. John McClane is only he's only a hero by the circumstances that he's in. Like if he was yeah. doing this as a police officer, we'd be like, huh. <laughs> You know, <laughs> John McClane is a very tainted hero. Could you imagine a police officer using a chain and a shotgun to hang a long-haired German man and then push him against a wall? Like, that's essentially yes. what John McClane did. I can't. You could. So, it's so <laughs> messed up. I mean, I guess they needed just some explanation for, like, how he knows how to fight and why he has, like, a gun, you know? But, jeez, you couldn't have just made him, like, a veteran or something? Like, just... Or, just <laughs> bad if he was a veteran too i don't know i don't know i mean i don't have to follow get, the rules they tell me with my gun safety laws you, you could get into some juicy <laughs> like anti-war i mean if he was a veteran you could get into some like anti-war commentary like oh he's back from nam and it's like just oh if he was like this imagine how he was on the front lines blah 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 war commentary because we don't have enough mm-hmm. of that <laughs> um <laughs> i have a have any of you guys seen die hard 2 die harder no me neither. no what on earth the one, poss- there's one with the sun, what right? Like when the sun is about? older. Hold you on, know, good day to up. die hard. Wait, die hard franchise. How many? 
there's well, just watch the first one just there's don't video games there's die hard die hard 2 die hard with yeah. a vengeance live for your die hard and a good day to die hard oh man that's entirely too many movies <laughs> why do they keep making how many times do buildings get taken hostage oh what well, the second one is also on christmas eve oh yes see he cannot catch a break well Let's see, because I can assume nominated for four Oscars, that's why. <laughs> because this did. A Good Day to Die Hard came out in 2013. You're lying. Oh, it, it did. Was, yeah. Released yeah, no, on you guys February, don't remember that? Released on February 14th, 2013 to overwhelmingly negative reviews. <laughs> yeah, crazy. it was insane. Whoa. Wait. This Die Hard was Go ahead. Sorry, go. No, I I'm reading about Good Day to Die Hard. This is about like Chernobyl. And the CIA is involved? Uh, and... Yeah, no, it takes place in Russia. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. What is well, happening? Die Hard was nominated for several, four Oscars. Really? What Oscars? And won Best Sound, Best okay. Film Editing, Best Effects and Sound Effects Editing, and Best Effects Visual Effects. It won all of those? No, it was nominated. Oh, which ones <laughs> did it win? It None. didn't win any Oscars, but... Oh, I missed that. <laughs> it won a Blue Ribbon Award, awards of the Japanese Academy, um, the Ho Chi Film Awards, Online Film and Television Association, National Fr Film Preservation Board, National Picture Sound Editors. So they did win stuff for, wow. like... Yeah, Be deserves a it 10 out of 10. for best foreign la uh, foreign language film. In what country? <laughs> uh, Kinema J I um. It seems like it swept Japan. Yeah, I think <laughs> it did. But so Japan like centric, maybe I don't know, because there's Mr. Well, I mean, Akagi. Probably, yeah, because like the 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 company was Japanese. I'm assuming that that probably appealed to a lot of Japanese people. Yeah, they're like, I was, we want to die hard too. Was not expecting Mr. Akagi to make a Pearl Harbor joke. I, that, that, that threw me for a loop for a second. I was like, whoa. Did he? Uh, yeah, I was a big fan of... of uh, I was sad when Mr. Akagi died. Um, also, I really like Holly. I, I really like Holly as a character. I thought she was... Yeah, she's good. wonderful. And she Holly does a really good great. job. Yeah. And she's All like the homies great... hate Ellis, though. Oh my gosh, Ellis was terrible. But Holly did great. Yeah, taking charge of the situation, like advocating for that pregnant woman and like... Mm -hmm. kind of being the representative of the hostages i was a big fan of holly and she wasn't super like stagnant you know she wasn't just a damsel in distress she actually like kind of took some agency and did stuff um yeah I'll, she's great yeah, yeah big fan of holly holly uh and of course it was a nice touch to like see her at the end be like oh no no holly mclean I was like, oh, yay, clap, clap, clap. Are you guys going to hyphenate or what? I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like it's already changed well, now, in the computer. The wonderful thing is that in this wonderful Christmas movie called Die Hard, one of the main characters' names is Holly. So, you know, just another little bit oh, there. Oh, shoot, that's um, what made me that I was like, I was, I was like, yeah, we've been <clears throat> talking about her for a while. We know she's named Holly. And then it just clicked what you meant by that. <laughs> that's cute. Holly John. Oh, that's Christmas. cute. How cute. Also... Yeah. How do we feel about the like newscaster subplot? I didn't. Oh, care I'm for fine it. with it. I, I, yeah, I feel neutral. I didn't really care for it. I don't think it added anything or subtracted anything. I was just kind of like, okay, I guess we're. I didn't really get it. I was like, sure, we're we're cutting to this guy for some reason. I don't know. Well, th there's an emphasis throughout the movie of how media is portraying these situations versus what the reality actually is and what the harms of media. Uh, can do like the the tv guy reveals a lot of personal information about john mcclain that's probably not great for the terrorists to yeah, also have that was right? messed up that guy was yeah weird. so it's showing how media can actually make situations worse and put more stress on on the people that are operating within a situation to to try and you know obviously yeah. stop it from happening uh so again another critique of a of a big industry slash organization that the movie has which I thought was really interesting and and, and met perfectly with its uh, anti cop theme as well. Yeah, I didn't even think about it like that, but that's 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 good. I think the only reason I was like kind of not really have any feelings about it was because the movie's already like, especially for the time, it's already kind of long. Like two fifteen back in the eighties was on the longer side for sure. Um, 
so I guess I was just kind of like, oh, I guess this is just like another thing we're throwing in. But yeah, like in that looking at it in that context, which I, I wasn't before, uh, that that's a very illuminating point. Die Hard has a lot of Die Hard, Why is Die Hard so socially progressive? Well, that's why it's such a great movie. I mean, like, look at if you want more proof of the media theme, then look at how the dude is talking about Stockholm syndrome on on the television. Oh yeah, that and, was weird. And how that's just not happening inside yeah. the hostage room because Holly is so badass and is taking charge and making sure that like she is the the hostages like point between them and Hans and and she's taking real responsibility of the situation instead of being like oh hans you know i've i've been stuck with you as a hostage forever and now i think i'm in love with you like i'm really glad they didn't go that route oh, a lot of times so the bad a lot of times the bad guys in these action movies are always like weirdly romantic you know they're like you know they're just mm -hmm. creeps and i'm really glad they didn't do hans like that no yeah and definitely like going back to charlie's media point like hans even like lies to the media to throw off well he lies to the cops which goes through the media um to throw off essentially what they think the whole like heist organization yeah thing is. what the goal is yeah yeah mm -hmm. and he's like oh i just read it in like forbes <laughs> you know and it's just uh -huh. kind of like that was just very like funny and also like connecting that like he that's not even what was going on but just because they were like inferring and they assumed that like oh it's like this whole terrorist thing like no the entire time it was just a robbery yeah that was a, an interesting point that they kept coming back to is like oh this literally is just a robbery i i uh, i was always expecting it to like develop into some grander scheme and hans would have this crazy backstory but i kind of like that it was just a robbery you know yeah. yeah add some simplicity it doesn't i think die hard's a movie that like for all these themes we're able to pull out of it die hard's a movie that doesn't need to be too complicated i don't think i think it's best enjoyed as as, as just an action like a fun action movie with over the top effects and stuff blowing up uh and i think that's what it does best yeah i don't think i don't think not thinking about these themes diminishes this movie's enjoyment at all this is no. one of those movies that you can totally just sit down watch with some some pals crack open a cold one have some hot cocoa and enjoy. It's a, a very nice movie. I, I I I enjoyed it. I don't know. I mean, I don't plan on watching it again. Like, I don't have any plans to watch it again anytime soon. But I mean, I definitely enjoyed it. And if it's like, it's definitely something I'd put into consideration for like movie night with the boys, you know? The boys and yes. girls, because we reject toxic masculinity on the Socratic Circle oh, podcast. The, we sure the boys, do. The, the, we the sure boys, do. The theys, the boys. The, the yeah, boys. guys, gals, non-binary pals, we oh. all watch and die hard tonight. Thank you so much for introducing me to that phrase, Casey. I'm going to use it all the time now. It's wonderful. Isn't it great? All my homies love die hard. All the homies love die hard. We I are... We have been sidestepping over the major thing uh, with Die Hard, though, and I think it does warrant at least some discussion. Is it a Christmas movie? Do we all think right, it we'll is? We'll talk about this before we go. All right, this is our last thing because we've been putting it off. You're right. We've been avoiding the question. Uh, who wants to go first in answering this question? Because I don't. Charlie? <laughs> okay. I have tons passionate. of points. <clears throat> so Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie, and I think that it's important to say what I think a Christmas movie is. I think a Christmas movie has to have at least two things. I think it needs to have some sort of Christmas setting. Uh, so, you know, something that's related to Christmas. In this case, it's a Christmas party on Christmas Eve, right? So pretty Christmassy there. And then additionally, I think it needs to talk about some themes that have to do with Christmas. So in this movie, I would say probably the biggest Christmas theme is that of family, Right. John McClane's whole thing is that he's trying to, you know, save everybody and save his family and rebuild his marriage and do all these great things so that he can get together with his kids on Christmas and celebrate uh, that whole whole time together. And there's tons of little uh, moments that you get to see where this family theme is actually, you know, more explored. Like Hans, when he's talking about Takagi and he's giving that long list of things that he's done, like, oh, he's been to Harvard, he's been to yeah, like that scene. The last thing he ends with is father of five. Oh, and there's true. no mm. particular reason for him to do that but if you start thinking of this movie as this is all about family then that moment makes you know a little bit more sense and repeatedly everyone in the movie has talked about uh, uh, being a father of someone like uh the the cop dude whose whose name i forget he pal. uh yeah pal he is a family 
You know, he's a father. Rip Powell. We love Powell. I'm sorry. Did you say Rip Powell? Because I, I forgot mean, his name. Is yeah. he dead? Did Powell die? I mean, no, Why he's not dead. Powell's um Urkel's dad, by the way. Fun fact. Oh, snap. Urkel. Or, yes, Urkel. Urkel. But uh, uh, so uh, so we have that family theme going on there. And then the, also there's just tons of Christmassy things. And specifically, this movie is saying, look, we know what traditional Christmas is. We're going to turn it on its head a little bit. You get to see this when Argyle is talking about his Christmas music because Bruce Willis is like, I'll put on some Christmas music, put on some Christmas music. And Argyle's like, this is Christmas music. And then he plays Run DMC. Right. So a little bit of a twist of what Christmas traditionally means there. Uh, the reason why Hans chooses to attack at Christmas and at no other time is because everyone has their guards down at a Christmas party on Christmas Eve. Ooh. Nobody is going to suspect anything bad happening there because it is a season of of good tidings and good joy, which is antithetical to what Hans is doing right now. Again, we get to see another Christmas theme with that of greed show up when we're talking about the uh, Nakatomi Corporation and how, you know, they're hoarding all this money and how Hans wants to get all this money as well. So greed, again, a very central struggle within the film. And there's tons of mm -hmm. other little tiny things like they do the uh, the not a creature was stirring, you know, all through the house rhyme when they're talking about where the police officers are. And, you know, just tons of little details like that that I think totally make this a Christmas movie. Yeah, that's yeah, that's. I mean, you you make some very very good points. I don't know, Casey. Do you think it's a Christmas movie? I do think it's a Christmas movie. I would say the rules of what makes, <clears throat> excuse me, what makes something a Christmas movie is whether or not Christmas is a big catalyst in the movie. As Charlie was saying, like there's several references to it. There's even Christmas songs in the soundtrack, and Christmas is a huge plot point. Like if we look at it like um in what could have been changed like the party wouldn't have happened if it wasn't at christmas because it was a christmas party and john wouldn't have been trying to go out to see holly over the holidays because you know that's the perfect time to go see your estranged wife am i <laughs> right <laughs> so relatable True. so relatable but also so because of those reasons, I do believe that it's a Christmas movie. But also, a lot of those could be changed, and it still wouldn't be a Christmas movie, if that makes sense. Like, if you look at Elf, like, you could change the Christmas aspect of Elf, and then it just wouldn't necessarily be a good movie. But if you change the Christmas aspects of Die Hard, it would still be a pretty solid action movie. If that yeah, totally. I, I see that. Like, like Christmas isn't like necessary to Die Hard, but it definitely like is the reason why Die Hard happens. Yes, I see. I agree with that. I, I think, you know, my my Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie sort of shtick was really only catalyzed by the fact that I had yet to hear a good argument for why it was. The extent of the arguments I'd heard for why Die Hard was a Christmas movie up until now was, well, it takes place at Christmas, therefore it's a Christmas movie. And that logic is just really bad. Like, by that logic, Spider-Man 1 with Tobey Maguire is a Thanksgiving movie because it takes place during Thanksgiving. Like, that's eh, not, you know true like it's not there's something else there there's something there's some hidden christmas essence and i tried to get after that in my children of men video and and i don't i'm still searching for 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 what makes a christmas movie a christmas movie but i think presented with these arguments these very sound solid arguments and i want to preface by saying i back i said back in the beginning i said it now i think december christmas time is definitely the best time to watch die hard it would be much less satisfying to watch this movie during you know fourth of july it just wouldn't feel right and i think uh, though though my brain might not agree my heart feels the calling to agree with you guys that die hard is it just might be a christmas movie after all i i'm, I'm conflicted i'm torn in two directions but i think i think deep in my soul i feel the yearning to agree with you guys I I, yes. I don't oh know that I'm God. all the way there yet, and I don't know that I'll ever be all the way there. It's 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 an emotional journey, but I I, I see your points, and I agree with your points. I don't have a refutation to any of them, really. I think really my main thing, like Casey was saying, is that if you change the Christmas setting to any other setting that involves a party, Die Hard would go essentially the same way, uh, which is the only thing that keeps me from agreeing all the way. 
you know, it's like you could change the Christmas variable and Die Hard would still be Die Hard. But I think the fact that the, they decided for that variable to be Christmas, like we can argue about hypotheticals all we want, but at the end of the day, Die Hard is like very Christmas heavy. And and I I just I just might have to like put one toe over the line and and kind of agree with you guys uh, I guess yes yes Chris D'Souza uh, the writer of the movie is very happy with you James because he says it's a Christmas movie so, well I don't care beautiful. about Christy Susie all right so <laughs> <laughs> and on this day James's heart <laughs> grew three sizes oh my gosh how the, with accepting the, the truth the Grinch stole Christmas how the Grinch agreed that Die Hard might <laughs> I guess fine be a Christmas movie <laughs> Oh, all right. I feel so happy right now, James. You've really I, given me the greatest gift of all. I, you know, maybe it's all a front, though, like you with Napoleon Dynamite. And as soon as we stop recording, I'm going to be like, Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. I just said <laughs> that for the for the content. I hate Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite. Bad movie. Uh, I, you know, I will never understand you. But I, I just have taste at the ooh, end. Of all right. The day. All right. I, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not even going to engage with you. Uh, but. That's going to bring us to the end of another episode of the wonderful, jolly, holly, jolly Socratic Cinema podcast. Thank you so much for listening to our first Christmas episode of the season. We had a lot of fun recording. We always do. We love chatting about movies. So let us know in the comments what you think about Die Hard. Do you think it's a Christmas movie? Yes, no, why? Maybe so? I don't know. Uh, go ahead and, and like and subscribe and, and comment and do all that good stuff if you're watching on YouTube if you enjoyed the video. Because only a small percentage of our viewers are actually subscribed. Which I, I say it every week, but it's just so uh, funny, huh? Funny, isn't it? So if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to write us a review and follow us uh, so you'll never miss an episode. And if you enjoy what we do and you want to support us and, and throw a couple bucks our way this holiday season, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Cinema. We're going to have lots of cool stuff on there. Our page looks a little barren right now, but that's only because we're waiting for you guys. And then we'll, you know, like we're waiting for the patrons and then we'll start giving you the content. So excuse the the bland looking Patreon page. But uh, seriously, thank you guys again so much for listening. Check out our Christmas video essay about Children of Men and why that might also be a Christmas movie. I, I don't know. I guess anything can be a Christmas movie these days. Um, but also check out our Attack on Titan video essay if, if, if you want to, because Attack on Titan is a really cool show, and we really like it here at Socratic Cinema. Uh, we're probably going to watch the premiere after we're done recording, to be honest. But yeah, with that being said, thanks so much for listening. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, and I love you. So, with that being said, we've been the Socratic Cinema Podcast. Uh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to kill you, James. I'm going to murder you. 